Hi, this is Greg from Lammer Technologies. Today I'm going to talk to you about our latest asset called Automatic Gamepad Generator. This will be the technical deep dive into this asset. Uh, as the name implies, uh, basically it allows you to create controller support uh, very easily, usually less than five minutes to do so. Uh, it supports all the various platforms, whether it's Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, uh, Fire TV, Android TV, uh, Xbox console, PlayStation console, and WebGL. What Automatic Gamepad Generator does is allows you to add the input manager entries for controller support uh, very quickly and very easily. Uh, this can be a pain point uh, because controllers can have up to 16 buttons and 5 accesses for a combination of 21 things you need to create. On top of that, control there are no standards with controllers, so your Xbox controller might be uh, access 0 and 1 for the left stick. Uh, Bluetooth controller might be uh, access 2 and 5. So to get controller support for tons of, of different controllers, you can end up expanding the Im input manager to quite a few entries, which if you were to do this by hand, takes quite a long time. Um, if I were to hit play here, you can see that the arrow keys move the, the left ball. The left ball is uh, player one here. The WSAD keys control the second sphere. Um, and then I have a couple of buttons here to change the change the um, color of the spheres. I do also want to show you in this scene that the controller support is currently not there, which is what you would expect because we only have in the Unity Input Manager the, the keyboard control setup. So if I hit the left stick or the right sticks or any of these buttons, nothing happens currently. There are numerous good assets on the store such as Rewired and In Control. However, each of these requires you to learn a new um, API so that you can't reuse your code between what you did for keyboard and mouse and controllers. So if I were to look at typical code for input using Unity's Input Manager, you see things like input get button down uh, and a string in this case because my example scene supports multiple players. Um, I'm concatenating a string together with the player number in it. Um, but in general, you just see input get button down or get button up or get button um, and then a string. Um, likewise, for accesses, you have input, get access, uh, and then a string as well. And these just correspond to the input manager uh, entries that you see here. Um, as you can see, all these entries currently are for keyboard support. Uh, so in this case, left arrow and right arrow, uh, player two is using the uh, WSAD keys, so this is for horizontal, which is A and D. Um, in here, you can see these are each correspond to controller support, and it would be typical to what you would create first when you're making any game. Um, the Unity Editor allows fast iteration, so it's just natural that you would create keyboard and mouse controls first. Um, Controller support usually either comes later or is a major investment uh, to specifically um, support multiple controllers. Um, the problem with uh, other APIs is it, it means, like uh, with Rewired and uh, In Control, means that you have to then start creating multiple if you want to support both controllers and, and keyboard and mouse, you end up with two sets of code. One for the uh, keyboard and mouse support, the other for the controllers. Um, so uh, that's obviously not ideal since you would like to have one code base for, for all of your inputs. 
so what automatic gamepad generator does for you is it exposes uh, a nice editor window to give you a, a a nice overview of all your uh, of basically your current input manager so let me open it up here and and uh, just like the information says here you get to uh, you get to automatic gamepad generator by window auto gamepad generator so what you're presented here is basically the same information as you would see uh, it corresponds to what you've made for keyboard and mouse support here in the uh, virtual axes um, it also has a number here which we'll get to later um, and exposes uh, nice variables for you to quickly generate controller support so the first thing you want to do with automatic gamepad generator is to select the platform um, in this case I'm in I want to test in the unity editor and I'm also doing Windows builds so I would select Windows uh, if I was on a Mac and or doing Mac builds uh, if I was doing an iOS build an Android build basically you select here the platform that you wish to to do a build for or to test on if you're testing in the window in the uh, unity editor here is naturally do your controller mappings your player one horizontal is a nice fit for left stick horizontal um, I'm gonna go ahead and do natural mappings for the other inputs here uh, since I'm using the Xbox controllers um, I'm just going to match up the colors. B button is red. Y button is yellow. And I'm going to also do the same mappings for player two. Actually, I'll I'll do the D-pad for this one. A button is green. Also, the other field that we have here is the player. Uh, if you're doing a single player game, you'd probably want to leave it at get motion from all joysticks. It means any of the controllers you plug in, it would accept input from them all. In this particular case, my little example scene here um, supports two players, so I'll map them accordingly. Okay, so we've we have the mappings that we want here, and at this point in time, all that's left to do is hit generate. See, it says processing and then success. I also have remember these are essentially two views to the same data. Um, as you can see, we now have all of uh, these inputs added to the input manager, and so I'll player one horizontal we map to the left stick. Um, as you can see it's a joystick axis um, on the x-axis which is the first axis and uh, joystick one here if I were to open up the player two which we did d-pad remember we see joystick axis the sixth axis which is correct for an Xbox controller and joystick two um, the other thing to notice here is we're automatically giving you uh, best values for for the control types. A D-pad is a digital um, control. You usually want to have the gravity and sensitivity quite high on, on digital controls and the dead space very low. Um, the left stick is an analog control. You, you typically want no gravity on those, very low sensitivity, and a higher dead zone since sometimes joysticks, especially over time, will be slightly not calibrated or whatever. So you, uh, uh, as you can see, automatic gamepad generator gives you typical best values for these. The other thing to notice here is the descriptive name on all of the generated uh, items is, a, it, it is listed here as AGG generated. 
the reason why we add this is if we, let's say we made a mistake or let's say we're ready to uh, have a multi-platform game and we did our Windows build, everything's working great with controller support, but now we also want to do, let's say, an Android build. Um, what this allows us to do is to quickly uh, delete all the generated accesses, not the original keyboard mappings, because they won't be marked here. So if I looked at my original one, um, you the descriptive name here is empty, whereas all the generated ones, the descriptive name has AGG generated in. So what if I click the delete generated accesses, it would wipe out all those mappings. I could then go, uh, okay, I want to do an Android build just uh, redo the mappings, hit generate, and we're good to go for, for an Android build. One of the other things to see here, and, and again these are essentially just two views into the same data, the reason why I gave you a, a separate view is it's much nicer to keep track of, of uh, a, as you're essentially adding one extra set of, um, of inputs here, it's nice to not just see uh, this list growing and growing in and, and let's say we wanted both left stick and d-pad to be um, uh, the the movement of horizontal and vertical for, for for the players we would just after we generated the first time I'd then come back here and and add the d-pad so then you'd get a third one uh, for horizontal and vertical automatic gamepad generators view into the same data is much smaller because we don't need to do uh, all those duplicates. All the data is still here. If I were to expand the fold out here, I'd see the original keyboard mapping and I would also see the generated one here. So I can uh, so, you know, still view all the same data, but most of the time we're, we, we just care about a, a nice consolidated view. Um, also at this point, this uh, this expanded view shows that for each of each time that we generated, if we wanted to override that default that I explained earlier for analog or digital joysticks, you certainly can. Uh, you can enter in uh, whatever values you want here. Uh, it's very uh, most of the time you want to leave that alone, but it is, I'd say, fairly common. Uh, in certain games that I might want to invert the axis. Maybe I'm doing a fighter pilot game and I want down on a joystick to mean up and up uh, mean down. I would check invert here before I went ahead uh, and generated. Um, if I leave these all default, I'm going to uh, auto auto gamepad generator is going to give me the best values, which uh, depends on whether this is a digital control or an analog one. If I change this value to anything other than these defaults here, it's going to honor whatever you, you place in here. So if I change the gravity to some high number uh, before I hit generate, it will certainly honor those values. So at this point, I'll just I'll, uh, also uh, show you that, remember on player one, we generated um, the left stick being the horizontal and vertical, I'll show you that you can certainly do more than one. So I'll d-pad horizontal and uh, vertical here. If I leave the rest of these to none, nothing's going to happen with them, only the ones that we, um, we, we select for mapping, and these were joystick one here, are going to get generated. Um, so you can certainly do these one at a time if you're just playing with certain values. Um, or you could do them all at once like we did the first time. If I hit generate here, so now we have the, the third mapping. So if I were to open up these, I have the key, original keyboard one, I have the uh, left stick here one for the first access, and here I have the sixth access one, which is the, the D-pad. Um, so now I have, for player one, I can use either the left stick or the D-pad. Uh, for player two right now, remember the first time that we did it, it's only D-pad. Which you can see here. Just the six axis and the keyboard one. So at this point in time, it's the we were good to go. We just closed the window. Any future builds here would have the uh, all the inputs. And now I'll give you a quick uh, demonstration here when I hit play. 
Okay, so here's the demonstration here. Remember for player one, we did both the D-pad and the left stick here. So as you would expect, I'm hitting the uh, D-pad and that it moves around. Also, the uh, green, blue, yellow, and red buttons correspondingly change the color of the sphere, as you would expect. And on player two, remember, we just did the D-pad. So I'm hitting the, uh, the left stick here, nothing's happening. But I can hit the D-pad and the controller responds just fine. And the typical same buttons, I can change the color of the sphere here. And there you go. So there are a couple things to, to note here. Um, one is we have all the standard uh, buttons for, the, for a typical controller. But you'll notice that some of the controls here towards the bottom are marked with a controller specific. Uh, the reason for this is, first off, not all controllers have these buttons. Uh, the iOS MiFi controllers, for, exact, uh, for example, have none of these. Um, they don't have a back button. Uh, they don't have a uh, let the, the sticks don't push in for an extra button. Um, and then three at the bottom here are fairly unique. Some controllers, uh, like the Xbox controllers, they treat the two triggers on the back as one axis. So left trigger and right trigger uh, are both the uh, third axis. Uh, one goes from zero to negative one and the other one goes from zero to one. Uh, but they are the same uh, axis, so that's what you have here as triggers combined. All the other platform, or I shouldn't say all the other platforms, Xbox consoles, that, that's also true. Uh, all the other platforms uh, treat the triggers as separate uh, axes. There are still no standards here. Uh, some, some like uh, the Mac, for example, go from negative one to one. Uh, on each of the axes. So if you weren't uh, touching the trigger at all, it would register as minus one. And if you're pushing the trigger all the way in, it would be registering as one. Others go from zero to one um, or zero to negative one, like the Fire TV controller. Uh, one of the axes uh, go from zero to minus one. Um, so we've listed all of these as controller specific. And basically, this is just a reminder um, that the there aren't any standards when it comes to these controls. Um, if you're, you know, generally you're, you're targeting one platform like Windows, so feel free to use triggers combined, no problem. Um, other times, maybe you're only doing uh, Android, for example, so you, you'd use, uh, you know, left trigger and right trigger, no problem. Um, the it's just a friendly reminder to remind you that a not all controllers have the these controls and b that there is platform specific uh, um, considerations here the these controls are the same uh, regardless and most simple games or, or even some more you know medium complexity ones you can stick to the face buttons and the bumpers and that and and you'll be just fine multi uh, cross platforms um, these particular controls it's good to have a feel what the actual controller is going to do so we've we've marked them appropriately one of the uh, last considerations here is on uh, multi-platform. So let's say I'm I'm naturally happy with my Windows build here, but I'm going to go ahead and do an Android build. Because we've marked all of our generated accesses, this is extremely simple. the The original mapping, uh, you know, took less than five minutes, um, and I'll just show you how quickly it is to to switch platforms. So I'm I'm done with my Windows build. What do I want to do? I just delete all of my generations here. And as you can see, everything's back to one. And also, if I open up the same view into the input manager, I'm back to my, just my, and these are the original keyboard controls. And again, that's because none of these have the 
generate a descriptive name. So I want to do uh, now an Android build. What would I do? I would just basically select Android here and do my mappings. this particular case I'll just do the left sticks for both of them and my typical joystick one joystick two mappings and I would hit generate here and I would be good to go now to do uh, Android build and it would have controller support um, as you can see the whole process takes you know roughly about a minute to two minutes uh, one other consideration here is Mo not all people, uh, especially when you're making your, your first iterations of a prototype for the game, uh, bother to create specific accesses. The uh, default Unity ones are uh, like Fire 1, uh, there's just a regular horizontal and vertical, uh, Fire 2, Fire 3, uh, Mouse X. So a lot of people when they're starting to code, you would just see input, get access, horizontal, and that's because it, it if you opened up a blank project obviously this is a project we've already been working on and changed them all you you would see those default uh, unity uh, accesses in there um, so if I opened up a blank project and open up this window I would just see the default unity ones um, it, it is important to note uh, that horizontal vertical and if you're on four six or later um, submit and cancel correspond to um, the default behavior for a um, for a unity GUI like your menus in that so if you want it to uh, you know this to controller support to work for your menus in that just either keep those um, horizontal vertical submit and cancel and map them appropriately or uh, or change in like when you created your canvas there'll be a, a event system object uh, you would in the uh, in the I think it's the controller input module you would then change horizontal to vertical to whatever one you created either way either keep the defaults and map them or change it to to an access that you've created and uh, and uh, your controller support will work for your new Unity GUI uh, menus just fine. Another reason why we have this platform drop down here is there are no standards across platform. If I were to uh, take the green button and map it to the A button and hit generate controller support, you would see this is joystick button zero on Windows. If I were to do the same thing on Mac, I would see that this is joystick button 16 on a Mac. As you can see there aren't really any standards across what the typical button mappings are on the different uh, platforms. We've gone ahead and mapped uh, the controllers the, the best that we can. Uh, we certainly have always picked the controllers with the highest market share. For example on Windows the Xbox 360 and Xbox One controllers dominate the market. Uh, it also is standard that like all the Logitech controllers, um, Air Maxfire Blaze, um, uh, Razer Sabertooth Elite, uh, they, they follow the same mappings on, on, uh, on Windows. Uh, PlayStation, obviously, the PlayStation contro uh, uh, controllers, uh, PlayStation console, the PlayStation controllers, are the uh, are basically the only controller you can get. Um, so on that console, obviously, the mappings correspond to the PlayStation controller. Um, on Mac, the Xbox controllers are still most popular. 
Um, so we we've done the Xbox mappings for for the Mac platform. Um, it does require a third-party driver. On most platforms, we have 100% coverage. Like the Android platforms, all your Bluetooth uh, controllers will work. They don't all completely agree, but there's no conflict. Like uh, A button is in different joystick buttons on different uh, controllers for Android. So on Android, we have 100% coverage. On iOS, we have 100% coverage. On the consoles, naturally, there really are only the, the native uh, controllers. So there's 100% coverage. Um, uh, same thing with WebGL. Um, on Windows, Mac, and Linux, because they're PC, uh, because they are essentially PCs and you can install third-party drivers, um, there isn't uh, agreement. Like on Windows, there's lots of legacy direct input devices. Um, again, we picked the, uh, for working to get the maximum coverage that we could. Um, which Xbox, you know, all the controllers that were previously mentioned. But if I were to get an unofficial driver and get my PlayStation 3 to controller to work on Windows, it would actually have conflicted mappings with the with the Xbox controller. And for for that very reason, we we have a list uh, which you can find the link in our documentation or on the asset store. We keep a list of all the controllers we support, all the known controllers that don't we don't support but on every platform we have over 75% uh, market coverage uh, and we've picked the controllers that have that most of your users that are going to play your game have. One note here um, using the unity input uh, manager allows us to not use a third-party API and it does allow us to reuse existing code here there is one exception though um, the Unity input API also would allow you to do something like this if input dot get key down with a key code Let's say the keypad zero button If you were to use this particular thing, it doesn't correspond to any access here. And hence, we wouldn't be able to generate your um, your support for the controller support automatically on this. Um, it is basically one-to-one -one here with your, your typical get button down. So we uh, definitely re recommend that you would create, uh, before you were to generate any of your access that you would create an access that corresponds to that so I think keypad yeah keypad 0 uh, here is what the uh, player 1 red is using so we we definitely recommend that you use the get button down instead of get key down so that we can automatically generate your access for you most people just use the defaults like the the ones that come with unity like horizontal and vertical and that so 99% of the time you're going to already be using these virtual accesses which we can generate just fine but if you added one with get key down instead of get button down uh it it in order for our controller support to be generated, you would need to flip it out to get buttoned down on a virtual access. But it works the same way, and this is the only uh, uh, code change that you would need to make, and that's only if you used get key with a key code instead of get button. So there you have it. There's uh, Automatic Gamepad Generator. It makes generating all of your uh, controller support very easy. Uh, in most cases, a minute or two. Uh, most cases with no code changes. Um, and then everything will just work. Hope you enjoy our asset.